Hey everyone, welcome back to Self Serving Skillet. This is Elliot. Hey. Elliot and I used to work together. And uh, Elliot, today we're doing we're doing mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. You're pretty close to college age, right? Yeah, uh, yep. yeah pretty close. Uh, in college, how much mac and cheese did you eat? Well, mac and cheese and ramen. I mean, that's about all you had. Yeah. But a fair amount. A fair yeah. amount. Yeah. All right. So, uh, and how much of that was just you make it from the package? Yep. Microwave, microwave, it was off, <laughs> that, water that, in, close. That, yeah. that was pretty much it. All right, yeah. so the the series that we're doing now, uh, pretty it's it's back to school, and yep. there's a little more work involved than just putting something in the microwave. Mm -hmm. But I still want to make things as approachable as I can, and I still want to make them delicious, and I want to make them cheaper. Today we're not yes, going sir. as cheap as we did in the hamburger helper episode because I had a whole bunch of boxes of mac and cheese on hand, and for me it's actually cheaper to use them than to not. Uh, my daughter's friend figured out that she was lactose intolerant, that my daughter was lactose intolerant, mm. and it turns out my daughter was just like dealing with it for all these years because uh -oh. cheese is delicious. Right, so uh, yeah, no more, uh, no more mac and cheese in my, in my house. So we're using that, but it will be cheaper, especially the way that we're doing it today, because we're not using the flavor packet. It will be cheaper if you just get a whole bag of elbow noodles. Yes, sir, and just cook them. All right, so this first mac and cheese, this is going to be a pizza mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. All right, what goes with cheese? Oh. Well, <laughs> pizza goes with cheese, right? So you're gonna make your pasta according to the package directions. And I'm even going to, this said six to eight minutes. Uh, these are these are five minute noodles okay. because they're gonna get beat up in here a little bit more than they otherwise would sure. if we were just using the, the seasoning packet. Mm -hmm. So come out of the water, your pan should be hot. And we're gonna follow the directions up until it's time to put that, that cheese in which is a quarter cup of milk and two big spoons of butter. So this is about a cup of mozzarella. This is about a cup of mozzarella cheese and I shredded this myself. You don't need to. If you do get pre-shredded mozzarella cheese, uh, it comes with an anti-caking agent on it and that will make your cheese clump just a little bit. It will be texturally not uh, as awesome as you want it to be. Okay. Okay, and that just that just melts Look at that. right in there pretty Looking good already. Pretty well, right? And with that, like we're almost done. We just need the flavors of pizza. So what goes on a pizza? Well, sauce. I have some sun-dried tomatoes and that's just gonna give us that little little sauce pop. Sure. Again, like you don't need to do that. You could uh, put some cherry tomatoes in or or um you know, leave leave it out altogether. You can make your sauce with a little bit of tomato paste. You don't like the tomato, just just leave it out. It adds some much needed acid though. And then what else goes in a pizza? Well, my classic is hey, come on, is not a pizza without pepperoni. Pepperoni, yeah. So I just I had some big old pepperonis and I just rolled them up and sliced them through. So we're just going to get those pepperoni slices in there, and then. Another thing I really like on my pizza is some olives. Now I had these Kalamata olives left over from, what did I make? Last week I made, I made salmon burgers and I made a, I made a, uh, I made a Niçois salad version okay. of a salmon burger. Okay. We're just going to cut a couple of those up, mm. get them in there. These are all examples of things that you could do. It's, they're not, right. they're, none right. of it is mandatory, right? This Even is the pineapple in there. Yeah, you could, they're you absolutely bad, yeah. could. Man, I got so much crap for, um, for telling for even saying like, I don't want pineapple on my pizza. And people are like, what, what do you mean? If it's a pizza that other people are eating, I just don't want it on mine. That's yeah. not what I want when liquid. I want pizza. Come it's, uh, <laughs> well, if you want it, that that's cool. Eat it and own it. But it, it's just not what I want when I, when I want pizza. Right. The combination is delicious. In that episode, I made a salad mm. with, uh, with, pineapple and ham and, and barbecue sauce, and it was, it was delicious. Mm. Just don't want it on my pizza. Amen. That was oregano. That's gonna bring this whole pizza-ness together. Right, let's let's try it out. Amen. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. 
<laughs> you got some some, some, some stringage there. Oh, oh <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was solid. Mmm. It's good. It's very light. Oh man, but all the flavors all comes through. Mm. Right, and I can hear I can hear that uh, cheesiness. that cheesiness sloshing around when you move mm -hmm. your spoon around. Some good uh nice texture from the tomatoes. Nice. The olives are mm, just like right at the end that little acid. Also I love Kalamata olives. So good. Mm, not too much cheese, not too much milk, like perfect consistency. Yeah, and the cheese is the cheese is what we all like about cheese. You know, mm. it's not it's nice and stringy and uh, and and delicious, and it has that melty quality. Mm. Very good, very good. Nice. Yes, nice. All right, let's uh, mm. let's move on to the next one. All right, so next we're we're gonna do the exact same thing, but we're gonna go with a different like cheese flavor. Mm. So what el what else goes with cheese? like a cheeseburger, mm. right? How do we kick that up like a couple notches? How about a mushroom with Swiss burger? Amen. All right, so we're gonna take our, take our mac, which we've just drained, quarter cup of milk, two tablespoons of our butter. All right, stir until that all kind of becomes one thing. Butter's melted, liquid is all over that mac, and then what what we're going to do off camera before any of this started i took a pound of mm. ground shuck that's okay. that's 80 20 beef mm -hmm. 80 percent lean 20 percent fat it's really the sweet spot i think and i just browned that just browned that over a medium high heat mm. and then when you start to see some fat coming out of that beef, that's when I'm gonna put some mushrooms mm. in. And I just cut up two, uh, two kind of larger mushrooms to get in there. Okay. And uh, we're gonna saute those in. And the great thing about mushrooms is that they absorb a lot of liquid. So all of this fat, all of this flavor that's coming out of the ground beef, we're gonna sure. trap in the mushroom, mm -hmm. right? So when, when you see your mushrooms then, getting a little soft, mm. I went in with the bottoms of these green onions. These are the tops. I'm gonna garnish this with the tops, use the bottoms in there, which is exactly the opposite of how I would usually use an onion. Mm. Usually you wanna get that in there first. It takes a while mm -hmm. to cook. Mm -hmm. Green onions, they go like that. So get them in last, pull them when everything's soft, and then we're gonna use our uh, dried, our powdered mustard trick. Powdered mustard is an emulsifier. It binds fat and water together. Okay. So all of the fat that the mushrooms didn't absorb, we're going to get some powdered mush uh, mustard in there. That's going to help the rest of the fat bind back to the beef. So before we get that into our into our mac, right? This is this is Swiss cheese. This is about a cup of of Swiss cheese. This is Gruyere, one of the one of the couple of types of cheese that we just lump into the Swiss cheese category. And it's already pretty, like, pretty in there. Like, we're, you know, we're, we're kind of doing this live, so we can't really show, uh, show the rest of them. And I have several different pots uh, that we're using, so I could, <laughs> this didn't take forever. But when that's all kind of melted in there, we're going in with our beef. Going in with our beef and our beef, there we go. And we'll be able to see this <laughs> once, mm. once we get it into the serving vessel. Elliot, can you hand me one of those spoons there? Because we uh, we found out off camera that we we skipped a very important step, a step I never want you to skip. Uh, the last one was a little undersalted, so make sure we taste. This one's actually pretty good. I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of salt, stir that in, and we're done. There we go. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Yeah, it's gonna be great, it's actually. Great color. Yeah, all right. And then we're just gonna, we need a little green on top, so we're just gonna going on with 
Mm. Boom. Some green onions. Go ahead, buddy. So the first thing I noticed is this wasn't isn't as stringy. I think the mozzarella really kind of stretches. Yep. But it still has a little bit of, uh, you can hear it, mm -hmm. definitely. Oh yeah, sounds cheesy. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. Mm. Say one more. Mm. Once again, very well balanced. Nice. Even with the meat in there, it's very light. Mushrooms are a nice flavor. Mm. Hint of the scallions or the green onions. Which are actually different things. But uh, I mean, you use them interchangeably. So it, you amen. know, it's like, it, it's like, it, is a hot dog a sandwich? No, but it still tastes good. Amen. Got two pieces of bread in there. <laughs> right. You actually can taste the green onions. It's very nice. Cool. Very fragrant. Nice. Cheese because, is perfect. Yeah, because we have them both in the beef and then mm -hmm. garnished over the top. Okay, right. Like you said, the cheese isn't as stringy, but still a good coating on the noodles. It's still there, right? I, oh, yeah. I took a bite and I, I still have that kind of nuttiness of the Swiss oh, yeah. cheese of the Gruyere, mm -hmm. like in my mouth. It almost has like a like authentic Italian, where it's like very lightly, like lightly dressed, but so flavorful at the same time. Like you don't feel heavy, it's not greasy, it's not oily. The, the, the dish was done with intention. Yes. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. That's, that's, that's high praise mm. from, from something that we, uh, we just kind of threw together to prove that we could do it better, <laughs> better than the box, right. better than the instructions. And not expensive. Yeah. At the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Looks good. Tastes good. Well, cool, man. Let's uh, let's make our last one. Amen. All right. So last last one we've got here. And again, these are all just examples of things that you could do. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have to do any of these. You can do half of half of one. Take your inspiration from a thing and and do something completely different. We're gonna do a jalapeno popper, mm. right? Okay. Jalapeno popper mac and cheese. Mm. So uh, noodles are done go back in the pan, our milk goes in, still quarter cup. Notice I haven't deviated from that recipe on the back of the box. And a couple, couple tablespoons of butter, maybe a little bit more, because that wasn't quite too. And then we're gonna go in with some cream cheese, right? Because that's, as much a part of the jalapeno popper as anything. And I'm just gonna go in with, I don't know, about that much, you know. I don't know what that is in metric or standard, but it doesn't matter, because I'm showing you. And, uh, you know, if I had to guess, it would be about a quarter cup, large right? Dollar. Yeah, a large, you know, it's enough. And uh, in your home cooking practice, you can, you can do as much or as little as you want. Where's my wooden spoon? I'm always missing my wooden spoon. Yep. New wooden spoon. <laughs> so you do actually have to melt that in, right? It's kind of like the butter and you're melting it in and um, it may need a little bit more salt than we put in the other ones because they're, uh, it, I don't know if you've uh, ever made cream cheese or seen cream cheese made, uh, but uh, there, it, it's, it's cream, it's not milk. It's, mm. it's the cheese from the cream, not the milk. So there's a lot less salt content in it. So first, I'm going to go in with these jalapenos. I want enough, enough cook on them so that they're not like completely raw, but I don't want them like stewed. So I'm just going to put them in maybe two minutes before I think the, the rest of this is going to be to a nice consistency. And then, once that's kind of in there, doing its thing. Bacon. Now this bacon, mm. I just put this bacon on a sheet pan in the oven for, uh, it doesn't even matter how long, because I actually preheated the oven from cold to 425, put the bacon in, and by the time it got to 425, the bacon was done. 
right? And that's a perfect way to render out bacon. So I'm gonna put most of this bacon in here, get the flavor of bacon in there, the flavor of jalapeno in there. I'm gonna use the rest to garnish. Heat off. We're gonna taste because tasting for seasoning is very important. Mm. Mm. Yep. Just like I thought, like it smells amazing, but it tastes like nothing. Mm. So you you gotta get your salt in there. Okay. Otherwise you're not gonna be able to taste anything. And if something if something smells amazing, but it just tastes like nothing, odds are it's your salt. You don't have enough salt in there. Mm. It could be your acid, um, okay. but generally it's your salt. Excellent. Always taste. <sighs> Self-serve skillet. Taste test. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. All right. So mm. the way I'm gonna serve this Mm. Oh, yeah, right? Ideas. Yeah, that's a it's a that's actually a really nice uh it it has some heat to it, but it's very herbaceous as well. It, that's uh that's one of the better jalapenos I've I've had this year. Mm. Nice. Mm. Right. So, I'm going to get my mac down, right? I'm going to garnish it with the rest of my bacon. And then over the top, we want some panko breadcrumbs. Now this is this is uh, jalapeno popper, mm. so we do want there to be some crunch on top. Yes, some sir. crunch, some bacon, some jalapeno, some cream cheese. Dig mm. in, sir. All right, chef. Get a good mouthful there. Nice. Hmm. Hmm. Oh wow. Mm. Right away the bacon. So good. Mmm. Nice little spice from the jalapeno. Great cheese texture. Oh man. You can smell those jalapenos. Yeah. Those fresh jalapenos, man. Does that taste like a jalapeno popper? It does. Nice. It does, nice. actually, yeah. That's good. It's almost like, like a better jalapeno popper. Sure. It's jalapeno poppers, there's always like too much cream cheese, you know, or something. Okay. Mm. Mm. That is an herbaceous jalapeno. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. This might be my favorite. Nice. Mm. Good bacon. I like the oven cook. Almost makes it a little more chewy instead of crunchy, I feel like, or something. Right, and I like that in bacon. I know a lot of people don't like it because they want their bacon to be very crispy. And this was still, uh, you know, reasonably crispy. Mm -hmm. But I, I do like to know that I'm eating meat when, yes. I'm, when I'm eating bacon. So I, I don't want it to be like, you know, brittle, just, right. just like glass, you know? Exactly. And mm -hmm. right, it's not undercooked at all. It's... Mm. Very nice. Just that jalapeno zest, every bite. That's awesome, man. And that nice bacon, oh man. So what what did you like about each one? Uh, does, do any of these give you ideas for things you could do mm. in your own kitchen? Um, sure. You know, are you gonna make one verbatim again? Yeah, you definitely. you loved it so much. Well, they're all very savory, that's one nice thing. Um, I do like the idea of the tomatoes with the cured meat. It goes very well. You can even see that the sauce got a little tomatoey. Yeah. It's very nice. Yeah. I like the olives, the kalamatas. Just a good, that's a nice, it's almost like each is a different theme, right? So right. that's almost like, like you said, it's a pizza. You know, very Italian, um, rich without being over the top. That one I would probably do, uh, you know, I might change up salami for the pepperoni or sure. something. Sure. Maybe prosciutto. Yeah. And I think out of all of them, it's probably the least amount of prep work. Yeah. Yes, sir. You, the mm -hmm. olives just came out. I chose to cut them. Right. You don't need to. Mm -hmm. um, didn't have to cook know. the meat. Yeah. Didn't have to cook the meat. Again, mm -hmm. I chose to cut it. You don't need to. Same with the sun-dried tomatoes. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Less prep. Very good. Mm -hmm. For the middle one. Yeah. This was probably the most prep. Mm -hmm. Cooking um, the hamburger and then yep. slice. You got to slice the onions, mm -hmm. mushrooms. Yep. Um, that one was that one was very good. Yeah, 
that one I would probably I might leave off the onions or okay. I might use white onions okay. instead and like you said cook them like before the meat before I throw the meat in depending on you know what I have access to but sure. the idea of the hamburger with the onions some sort of onion with the uh, mushrooms I mean just a great combo very good looks mm. good and it just looks yeah so visually appealing with the nice nice green onions there um, nice cheese content great in both that we've talked about Mm -hmm. um, this one, that might be almost like the, uh, that's like the quintessential, you know, it's baked, you know, sure. the idea of like a baked top, right. the bacon. Yeah. That one I would probably do, that one I would probably keep the most similar to the recipe you've got okay. going right here, I would think. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that one, still lingering. I don't know if it's, it's not just because it was the last one, I'll think, but. Right, right. Yeah. Well, the, the jalapeno lingers a little bit, the fattiness mm -hmm. from the bacon ling lingers a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I'd have to agree. I think that uh, this this guy, I think that that sticks with you the most. Right, yes. I, Very memorable. I think yes. that I would um, I would bring this one to yes. like a potluck or barbecue. For sure, for sure, yes. That yes. I would... This is like a home... I would serve this for dinner. Right. And then this is probably like a... a a dorm room snack yes, that an I elevated, yeah. well, slightly elevated because of the olives Slight, and everything. Yeah, but slightly yes, slightly elevated. The easier like, one to make. Oh yeah. snack that you know I'd probably make if I was just by myself. Right, you could be eating TV this cold. Right, you could be eating this cold out of the fridge. Right, you know that's probably <laughs> that would probably keep the best. You know, sure, sure. With the salami and stuff. Well, cool. Yeah, three different ideas for uh, basically yeah. boxed mac and cheese. All right, well there you have it. Get in the kitchen and make yourself something amazing. If you want to see more of me, more of what we've done here, you can click on any of these buttons on screen. We'll see you next week. Now, neither, neither one of these were hot because I like I made them all forever ago. So this might take a bit. Are you gonna like skip to pretend like it was the pan was hot when you put it on, and then like skip this part right here? Yeah, maybe <laughs> unless the unless this uh, this part is bloopers worthy, hey, and, then, there you go. and then it'll show up at the end. Dude, blooper. That's how you get likes. Right. It's bloopers, man. Nice. That's like the funniest part. Yeah. See, good good idea, Nick. <laughs> what type of mac and cheese? We'll be doing gluten free, dairy free, uh, vegan. Mac and cheese next week. <laughs> Nothing in my kitchen is ever gluten-free or dairy-free or vegan. <laughs>